what are the best stores of value that you can carry with you? People invest in collectibles because they can be used to store value and can be used for asset growth. As of 2020, collectibles, transactions and sales volumes, that is the actual returns on collectibles sold, the figures were reasonably good. For example, classic cars returned on average 6.2%, fine wines were up 5.4%, wristwatches and jewellery saw moderate single-digit returns on average, although Rolex collector watches outperformed by 8%. Luxury handbags rose more strongly, 11.8% for Chanel bags and 38% for Hems Beckin bags, in contrast to a more disparate TA for fine art. 2% according to the Sotheby's May Moses All Art Index. While Impressionist and Modern Art, Old Masters, British Paintings and American Art all recorded moderately negative returns in 2020, Contemporary Art and Latin American Art were modestly up. Traditional Chinese works of art in Torn stood out with an impressive 24% in 2020. Despite the pandemic, Total global wealth continued to rise throughout 2020 and 2021 owing to intervention and support by governments as well as greater savings due to restrictions on consumption, travel and activities. The reopening of economies and social activities saw collectors' pent-up demand matched with quality sales and improved sentiment, thus leading to a very terrible boom in collectibles in 2021. Both sales and performance rebounded strongly on average, but with large differences across collectibles and even within collectible categories. Within watches, for example, Rolex's annual returns rose by 33%, Chanel handbags rose by 24.5%, likely boosted by the scarcity of Lagerfeld design bags and standing in stark contrast to Beckin's bags that was down 3.6%. Fine art rebounded by 17% according to the Sudabi's May Moses All Art Index, with American art rising by 41%, while British paintings and traditional Chinese art were both up by about 25%. Only classic cars trailed the other categories with a modest 2% increase according to the Historic Automo Automobile Group International Index. Collectibles and their asset properties. Collectibles can be classified like financial assets into store of value assets, that is assets with low risk, low volatility, and in general, mid single digit returns, more geared towards capital preservation investment strategies. Stores of value are relatively safe assets with generally slow but steady value appreciation and are appropriate for shorter investment horizons. And then the second one capital growth assets, medium to high risk, and they are more geared to capital growth investment strategies. These assets will generally have higher volatility but and be riskier, but in return uh, come with faster average returns allowing investors to grow their capital. These will generally require, will generally require uh, longer investment horizons. Store value, watches and jewelry, as well as handbags, especially Chanel bags, are clearly standing out as stores of value with low volatility between 2.5% and 5% annually and low drawdowns. With the exception of pocket watches, their annual returns are 4.5% to 6.5%. Their information ratio, which puts returns in relation to volatility, 
and is thus reflective of the risk reward is impressive with values exceeding 100%. That is, average returns systematically outpacing fluctuation ranges, particularly North Warrior Rolex watches and Chanel handbags with very strong information ratios of 200% or higher. This means that the average return of 10% for Rolex watches, for example, is double the usual fluctuation, fluctuation range of 5%. Lagerfeld designed Chanel handbags are likely to continue benefiting from the scarcity in the next few years in the view of uh, the people at um, Credit Suisse, the authors of uh, this report. But the brand's broader evolution in luxury handbags will be determined by the ability to sustain collectors' excitement going forward. Hems Beckin bags, in contrast to Chanel bags, have had higher volatility, more comparable to that of global bonds or hedge funds among financial assets, but a better risk reward than the latter. Within stores of value, pocket watches are the clear underperformers with a much less compelling information ratio than usual below 100%. This might be explained by narrower demand than for wristwatches due to a smaller collector group. Moderately volatile capital growth assets. Among risk assets or risky assets with moderate volatility, the people at Credit Suisse count fine art in aggregate, fine wines and classic cars. Their volatility is high, single digit to 10%. Their drawdowns are moderate, with the exception of classic cars, which tend to have small drawdowns similar to those of typical stores of value among collectibles. Their information ratio is between 50% and 100%. This, this means that average returns do not fully compensate for the standard price fluctuations, implying longer required investment horizons. They compare to bonds and hedge funds among financial assets. As with pocket watches in the previous category, Old masters and 19th century art stand out as the underperformers among moderate risky collectibles with much lower returns than fine art on aggregate. Impressionist and modern art are instead quite representative of the mainstream art risk reward with information ratios of about 50%. High volatility, high volatility capital growth assets. American and Latin American art, British paintings and traditional Chinese works of art are all displaying double digit volatility between 10% and 20% annually with mid to high single digit returns and information ratios of below 50%. Moreover, via drawdowns are large. They compare to highly volatile equities like emerging market equities or commodities among financial assets, whereas private equity has similar volatility but much better returns, thereby displaying a superior risk reward. High volatility capital growth assets therefore require the longest of all investment horizons to absorb the high volatilities but they are by their correlations uh, most collectibles offer diversification through to tra traditional financial assets such as bonds and equities that is a low correlation private equity shows the highest correlation which possibly reflects the liquidity premium commanded by both asset classes. Of all the categories, wine is the more pro-cyclical collectible, whereas cars have a negative correlation with most assets, 
showing some counter cyclical, cyclical properties. Inflation, interest rate and growth sensitivities. As 2022 is marked by a transition to a more elevated inf inflation regime and higher interest rates, it is relevant to evaluate the sensitivity of the various collectibles to inflation and interest rates. The best inflation protection as measured by performance in extreme infl inflation periods is offered by Chanel handbags followed by traditional Chinese works of art and wristwatches, in particular Rolex. Most, far, most vulnerable to more elevated inflation regimes are fine wines and American and Latin American art. Conversely, classic cars and post-war contemporary art do best in low or normal inflation times. Rolex watches appear to be the ideal inflation or weather stores of value. For 2022, Credit Suisse estimates global inflation at 6.5%, which is about double the pre-COVID COVID, uh, rate of inflation and can be qualified as above the 90th percentile since 1994, but not as an extreme inflation environment. Additionally, they would estimate that the expected monetary tightening pursued by many central banks to fight inflation is, if, is successful in bringing back inflation to lower levels. For 2023, they expect global and US inflation will average around 3.8%, which is lower than 20, uh, 2022 but still consistent with the 98th percentile inflation in the 2010 to 2022 period. While real estate, real assets offer some protection against, against inflation, past history suggests that American and Latin American art, as well as fine wines, could experience some headwinds. As US 10-year Treasury yields have broken through 3% for the first time in many years in April 2022, the people at Credit Suisse also test the vulnerability of collectibles to different real bond yield regimes. Median US real yields over the period from 1976 to 2022 have been 2.2%. They contrast, they contrast collectibles returns in the 12 months that follow periods when real yields are above this median and when they are below. They find most collectibles hold their ground well in higher yield regimes, sometimes delivering better returns in the subsequent 12 months than when real yields are low. The contrast between returns in low and high real yield regimes is particularly stark for fine wines and fine art. Various categories of artworks, as measured by the Livex and Sotheby's May Moses Art Index returns. The same holds for Hems Beckenbags, which deliver higher returns in high real yield regimes than in low real yield periods. Instead, Classic cars and Rolex watches do better in low yield regimes. Finally, as investors wonder how collectibles weather the business cycle, the most pro cyclical collectible by far is fine art, which is highly dependent on the business cycle. When purchasing managers indexes PMIs, are below their long-term average. This tends to induce even negative returns in the following 12 months in practically all art categories except post-war and contemporary art, which is much lower than when PMIs are above their long-term average since uh, 1998, but still positive. Traditional Chinese works of art and other collectible asset classes are less sensitive to the business cycle. 
Chanel handbags and classic cars can even be considered as counter-cyclical. Their returns are higher in periods following below average PMI levels than in those following above average PMIs. So this is uh, a report written by Credit Suisse as it concerns um, collectibles among heightened uncertainty and inflation. Uh, that's the name of the topic of uh, that report. So thank you very much for watching this video.